Okay, in this lab, you're going to be using the spectrometer to study light. So your objectives. First thing you're going to do, you are going to measure the index of refraction for different colors in a prism. This process is called dispersion. We've talked a little bit. It's pretty neat. Measure the wavelength of light. You're going to be able to determine the actual wavelength of light using diffraction grading and a source. And then you're going to measure the separation distance between slits in a diffraction grating. So here we have a picture of an atom with these various electron shells, places where an electron can go. So as we found out, if we have an electron, let's say it gets excited and it goes up to this shell, and then it drops. But when it drops, it releases energy. And that's a little drop, so it releases a longer wavelength. This would be red light. If it jumped up really high, up to the end, say it absorbed a lot of energy, and then it fell back down, that's really energy, so it emits a high frequency wave which would be like a blue or purple light. So just to recap, all lights caused by jiggling electrons. Electrons move up, move down. In this lab, you're using a reptile light, which happens to be a mercury lamp. So we're going to see what mercury does, or at least the transitions that happen in mercury. They're different for every atom, and that's how you can tell what stuff was, or is. A brief overview, we are going to find this by refracting light through the prism. Light is the bending of light when it goes through materials with different speeds. So if you remember that index of refraction, this n value, speed of light in the material over speed of light in a vacuum. So what this means is when your index of refraction is lower, it's going to move fast, and when your index of refraction is higher, it moves slow. So if we look at this little cart, this is the cart analogy, and we pay attention, it goes this way, this tire hits first, which means it's going to bend in, right here, this is theta 2. The relationship between this is given by Snell's law, so you have n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2, and remember that all your angles are measured from the normal. Now different wavelengths of light interact a little bit differently. This process is called dispersion, so turns out higher frequency light, this blue light, is going to bend a little more. So if the blue light, and here's your normal, goes deek, and let's say it goes down there, your red light doesn't bend as much. So it'll go here and here. And what happens is if you look, you will see these two rays in different spots. It's why when you hold a prism up to the light, you get a really nice little rainbow. It's pretty. So that's dispersion. So let's talk about how we're going to use our apparatus to do this. First thing you are going to measure is the straight through angle. You need to find a zero point for your measurement. So you just line it up right here, and you record through this little window that you can see the source. Also, focus it so you get a really nice picture. Once it's focused, only focus it once. Do not touch the focus ever. Again, the other thing to note is all of these screws do not over tighten. We need these things to work. If you bend them down, you can bend the tube and I'll put the E in there. It just doesn't work as well. So please don't do that. And then you need to find the angle of the prism because we're going to bounce this off here. If we have light coming through, we need to find this angle. Notice it's indicated by the little black dot right here. So light's going to come in and go boop, come this way. Other light's going to come in reflect this way. So based on your observation right here, let's use red, this angle right here gives you twice the angle of the prism as indicated in your lab handout. Next you need to measure the light rays. So light's going to come in and it's going to go whoop, doo -doo, ta -da. and then you see something amazing. I'm not going to show you a picture, but you'll know it when you see it. Okay, which is kind of weird, because it's like, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but you'll know when you see it. It's very mysterious, but that's how we roll in the physics department. Keep in mind that the point is right here at this point, at this spot in the lab. All right, so it's going to pass through here and back. The point is somewhere over here. Also double check that you're not just going to uh, send this into odd, weird directions. Then comes the hard part, finding it on your vernier scale. Okay, actually the hard part's lining it up, but that's more of a test of patience, and you'll learn a little bit about yourself after doing that. But onward to reading the scale. So this dial 
keep in mind, just like any other scale, you look where the zero is lined up. It looks like the zero is lined up at, well, this point right here. And then you look at these little hash marks. So every degree, one degree, is equal to 60 minutes. All right? It's base 60. It's just like time. Thank you, ancient Babylon. But it's what we're stuck with. So what you can tell is there's 60 minutes, but this only goes up to 30. So if this little piece right here is beyond this hash mark, you add plus 30. So if it's beyond hash, if the zero is beyond the little half hash, hash mark, you add plus 30. Then, just like any other caliper, you look here and you say, which one of these lines up the best? And then you pick it. I'm going to say this one. And then you read it. So it's, where's the zero? That gives you your first number. So here, it would be, well, I'm not going to tell you because that's actually a pre-lab question. And then you say, is it past one of these little marks? If yes, whatever lines up the best here, you add 60. If no, then you just read this straight up. Second part, your error analysis. You're finding the index of refraction for each different color. It will be a little different. You'll need to carry this out eh, probably two to three decimals to see. All of your measurements you're going to be taking multiple times, so just kind of um, calculate it for various ranges, percent errors. Um, there's a fun trick we can show you with taking the derivative. Uh, if you talk to me, I'll show you that. Then we're on to part two, where we're talking about diffraction. So we give you a little grating. It's got a bunch of little slits in it. This part is a little bit different, because now we're going to superimpose these patterns. So if you look, through every slit, the color of light comes through. We make two little right triangles, one here, one here. And you can tell that this delta is the difference in path length between this path right here and this path right here, or the upper path and the lower path. Right. So this delta is equal to d, your separation distance, times sine of theta, where this theta and this theta are the exact same. Hooray! And this would be like your zero position, and this would be where your eyeball is. This is how physicists draw eyeballs. Yeah, pretty, pretty amazing. All right, so in order for these to constructively interfere or superimpose, because constructively interfere doesn't make too much sense, you need this to be an integer number of wavelengths, this delta. M being the number that you see in this case, this would be the first bright spot, so in this lab, M is just equal to 1. But as we can see, if this is a full wavelength, then the two waves will actually line right up, which means they will constructively superimpose. And you'll see a bright spot. If they don't, you see a dark spot. So that's what you're going to be looking for. All right, same type of thing. Here's your diffraction grating. Light's going to go in, and then it'll diffract. You'll see something over here. And then you'll also see something over here. So you're going to measure this angle on either side. So again, you're going to move the eyepiece back and forth till you see the lines. You're going to look for the first fringe. That's the m equals 1 case. Now, as you move back and forth, the reason there's this minus here, let's say your straight through angle is... 180. That doesn't show up. Let's try red. 180. And let's say that this is 200, and this is 160. The reason they're minus is because 200 minus 160, this right here, we know is going to be 20 degrees, and so is this. So this minus accounts for the fact that your straight through angle is not, not on zero. All right, part A, you are going to look up lambda. You have known values in lab reports. So Go ahead, calculate, compare to lambda. This d, this d is the separation distance. Now notice, you have lines per millimeter. You need to get d, which is this piece right here. So how would you do this? Well, we need millimeters on top. So let's say put millimeters on top. We have lines. This is in meters, so we know there's 10 to the... Mm, 1,000 millimeters, whoops, or 10 to the minus 3 meters in 1 millimeter. And you know how many lines you have because it's written on the grading, and you'll find the separation distance between 
lines. So this is to find D. That's very important. Now in the second part, we are going to use the known values of lambda, and you will find three values, one for each wavelength of D. And you'll compare. So first, pay, first case, find lambda. Second case, find D. All right, error analysis, real simple. You're going to measure multiple times, and then you wrap up, just to go through the objectives. You're going to measure the index of refraction for all the different colors using the prism. This is for the prism. Then you're going to measure of the light. These are for the grading. All right. Uh, that's an NG. It doesn't look like it, but it is. All right. Very important, don't bump it once you get it set up. Only focus it at the beginning. If you have any questions, please ask, and I look forward to seeing you in lab.